Well, good morning, everybody. Here I am again on a nice Friday morning, uh, getting ready for a new video this week. And I want to talk about being on the shoulders of giants. Uh, here's a quote from Sir Isaac Newton. If I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Here's my joke of the week. You should really uh, like this one. Conspiracy cats Nathan Oakley and Anthony Riley were going to the ocean for the first time. Anthony saw the ocean and was fascinated by the waves. He said, he wanted to do some research of the fluid dynamics of the waves and walked into the ocean. Obviously, he was drowned and never returned. Nathan said he wanted to do research on the flora and fauna inside the ocean and walked into the ocean. He too, obviously, never returned. Conspiracy cats waited for a long time, and we'll see what the end of that is a little later. Standing on the shoulders of giants. Uh, here's another quote, but we are dwarfs, but dwarfs who stand on the shoulders of those giants and small though we are, we sometimes manage to see farther on the horizon than they. Uh, this picture is from a, a antique book, some uh, derived from Greek mythology. Uh, there's a blind giant, Orion, who carried his servant, Sedalion, on his shoulders to act as the giant's eyes. Um, so he's on the shoulders of a giant. I am um, thought of this because we are constantly bombarded with um, these flat earthers that say, uh, you know, gravity doesn't exist or. Every, you know, uh, globe Earth all goes back to uh, the guy, I can't think of his name now, but um, every bit of anything that's scientific has been built on top of work that's been done before, uh, and this includes just everything. Uh, so even Einstein, this is directly from Wikipedia. Albert Einstein published his theory of special relativity in 1905. Um, I've heard this one a lot that, you know, with uh, Einstein's special relativity, you know, but it was built on theoretical results and empirical findings obtained by Albert A. Mickelson, Hendrik Lawrence, Henri Poincaré, and others, Max Planck, Hermann Minkowski, and others did subsequent work. So there was work done before Albert Einstein there had been work done after uh, Albert Einstein. Einstein developed his second theory, general relativity, between 1907 and 1915. Uh, he worked on it all those eight years. It was a tedious work. And there were many uh, contributions by many others after 1915. The final form of general rel relativity was published in 1916. Um, 
it's interesting to me the term theory of relativity was based on the expression relative theory uh, which was from some German word used in 1906 by Planck who emphasized how the theory used the principle of relativity in the discussion section of the same paper Alfred Butcherer used for the first time the expression theory of relativity. Uh, so this was in 1906 by Planck. In the 1920s, the physics community understood and accepted special relativity. So that was the first uh, theory that Einstein came up with. It became a significant and necessary tool for theorists and experimentalists in the new field of atomic physics, nuclear physics, and quantum mechanics. Uh, let me say here, uh, a lot of people say that um, you know Einstein came up with this theory and you know it's not good for anything it just uh, you know he's not a real physicist uh, but you notice that this is a tool for theorists theoretical physicists and experimental physicists so uh, there are two kinds of physicists uh, Einstein was a theoretical physicist his calling was to uh, have thought experiments and think about things and bring up and publish uh, these ideas. Experimentalists then, after that, do the experiments and the observations to prove or disprove uh, Einstein. And you notice that they mention three new fields of physics, but they didn't mention uh, astronomy or astrophysics. Um, so by comparison, general relativity did not appear to be as useful beyond making minor corrections to predictions of Newtonian gravitational theory. So uh, the first thing here, remember that uh, Einstein didn't replace Newtonian gravitation. Uh, he improved on, made minor corrections to the predictions of New Newtonian gravitation. It seemed to offer little potential for experimental tests as most of its assertions were on an astronomical scale. Uh, its mathematics seemed difficult and fully understandable by only a small number of people. Around 1960, general relativity became central to physics and astronomy. New mathematical techniques to apply general relativity streamlined calculations and made its concepts more easily visualized. As astronomical phenomena were discovered, such as quasars, the three Kelvin microwave background radiation, pulsars, and the first black hole candidates, the theory explained their attributes and measurement of them further confirmed the theory. So here it is. It's a theory that Einstein came up with but the theory of that was uh, further explained and confirmed by experiments and observation measurement of all of these uh, uh, events let me add just a little addendum here general relativity is a theory of gravitation so just like Newton did uh, the theory of gravitation, Einstein also did that, and that's what general relativity is about. According to general relativity, 
the observed gravitational attraction between masses results from the warping of space and time by those masses. Okay, so my feelings here are that, um, you know, general relativity is talking about warping of space-time, um, and this is a rather uh, esoteric topic. It's very new and requires a lot more study and uh, observation. So, again, when flat earthers say, uh, you know, there's no such thing as gravity and scientists don't even know what gravity is, uh, that's because of this statement right here where it says, uh, from the warping of space-time. And this is not the gravitational acceleration that we talk about on the Earth. This is something totally different. Uh, it has to do with the source of gravity and how gravity is created. Acceleration due to gravity is a number that has been well experimented, observed, and determined. This is not a theoretical number that somebody just came up with. Uh, so uh, this is an experimental number, not theory, or not um, made up. When flat earthers say scientists don't even know what gravity is, uh, this is what I just said. That, um, but um, we don't understand what causes gravity, where it comes from, and how it relates to the four fundamental forces. Uh, that doesn't imply that it doesn't exist. And notice that I said the four fundamental forces. Uh, that's the bottom uh, uh, point here. Um, if you look up wherever you want to look, uh, when it talks about the four fundamental forces, everybody talks about, all physicists know about, Gravity is always one of those four fundamental forces, and it's the strongest of those four. So don't tell me that gravity is not a force. Uh, and then lastly, I go back up one. Uh, just because you don't understand how a car is built, where all the parts come from, uh, the materials, where they come from, how it's created, uh, how each subsystem works, uh, that doesn't mean that cars don't exist. Uh, just because you don't understand it doesn't mean that there are, aren't people that do understand it. Science over time. Here's another good statement. Why is the sky blue? Why do stars twinkle? Why did the apple fall to the ground? What happens if I hit this rock with another rock? Uh, or another thing there. This is, geologists do this all the time. Is what if I try to scratch this rock with this rock? Um, well, we can talk about that at some other time, but um, that really does happen. As humans, all of us, even though, again, flat earthers won't, won't agree, uh, we are curious. Throughout history, humans have pondered the big and the small questions. Uh, this curiosity and desire to understand the world has helped form the origins of modern science. So again, 
when the flat earther tells you, uh, don't you ever question what you believe? Don't you ever have questions? Uh, yes, sci scientists do have questions. Uh, and uh, so just because we never thought of flat earth because uh, it's just a ridiculous theory doesn't mean that we don't have questions. Advancing scientific knowledge. Otago University geneticist associate professor Julia Horsfield points out that without genome sequencing or the discovery of the structure of DNA, the principles of sequencing DNA and her work investigating how chromosome structure and the de development effects of the fundamental genes involved in cancer would not be possible. So this is a good example of, uh, you know, if, if some conspiracy theorist says uh, there's no such thing as genome sequencing, well then what you've done is you've killed chromosome tests that involve cancer. Uh, so uh, you can't just throw out something without uh, understanding the uh, science that follows that. Uh, so next time you see a head headline about a breakthrough in medicine, remember that it's not a single event or a discovery but a series of developments that have led to a new breakthrough. There are many topics where one discovery leads to others. So uh, I looked up and there are just a whole bunch of these. And um, this is a website that gives you some that you can click on and learn about and it shows you how, how it was developed and how it progressed. Uh, there are things for uh, uh, satellites, rockets, uh, all kinds of things. It's really an interesting website. So check that out. I'll put that in the comments, I hope. So remember our joke of the week. Uh, so Anthony Riley walked into the ocean, drowned, and was never re and never returned. Nathan said he wanted to do research, and he too walked into the ocean and never returned. Uh, conspiracy Cats waited for a long time. Afterwards, he wrote this observation in his notebook, Flat earthers are soluble in ocean water. Um, hope you enjoy that and uh, learn something from this video. Uh, give it some extra thought and think about the fact that uh, science is a process built upon previous science you can't just um, make up something out of the blue. It has to uh, be built on previous uh, well-proven science. Uh, so we'll see you next week. I think on Tuesday I'm going to talk about This Is Your Life, um, Anthony, our Antonio Subarats. So look forward to that and we'll see you then.